Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to talk about how often you should be updating different parts of Asana. In order to get maximum use out of this product, I think there are different parts of Asana like the inbox, portfolios and goals that require updates at different frequencies due to the nature of how this product is meant to be used. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please leave me a comment below. And if you do want to get more one-on-one -on -one help with Asana, setting up your account or training your team, have a look in the link in the description below this video to learn more about my Asana consulting services. Let's get into this video. And the inspiration for this video actually came about after I was having a conversation with a client of mine recently. And she was going through the process of preparing to onboard her team and prepared some great documentation about the best practices around how their company is going to use Asana. And she made comments around what parts of Asana need to be updated at different times. And so I thought it was a fantastic idea that I wanted to share in this video. So let's talk about on a daily basis. How do you need to be using Asana every single day. First of all, I think you need to be coming into Asana and using your My Tasks page. This is something I've referenced quite a lot in various uh, videos of mine. This My Tasks page shows you all the tasks assigned to you from all of the different projects that you're working in. So on a daily basis, you need to be checking these tasks off, marking them as complete when they're done. Or maybe if you don't get something completed by the end of the day, you might want to update the due date to the next day or later in the week and uh, sort the task accordingly. But this view you need to be using on a daily basis because it's the screen that tells you what you need to do today and what you have coming up over the next week. And so quite simply, just checking things off or even adding new tasks in here, that needs to be a daily best practice. It's quite surprising actually, sometimes I work with a client and they say, oh yeah, my tasks, they're just not up to date, I haven't been ticking things off. And so then Asana requires a bit of cleanup at the end of the week. Um, so really, this does need to be a daily habit. Another daily habit to get into is working from the inbox as well. This is the notification system of Asana that requires you to be checking it every day. In fact, at least every couple of hours, if you're the kind of team that's really adopting Asana and using it for a lot of your communication, it's gonna require some kind of check-in every couple of hours. And so I like to go to the bottom of my inbox and look at the older comments and updates first. And so I can respond in the comments down here, I can like comments, and once I'm done, I archive the notification to clear it out of my inbox. And so here I can see in another example, a task that was completed, I can give that a like and archive it when I'm done. So this is something that should be done at a minimum once a day, but ideally even every couple of hours as you're using Asana uh, throughout the day. And so this way you're gonna be up to date on task changes, comments and people aren't waiting for you to get back to them waiting you know a couple of days so that's another important daily best practice now let's talk about what you need to do on a weekly basis i think once a week and depending on the projects that you're working on you need to be coming to the overview tab of your various projects and updating the status this status update feature here this is a great way of number one the project owner it's a great way for them to take an opportunity once a week to just assess how is this project going? And so I can write a summary in here. I can think about what we've accomplished, what we need to do next, and I can add even my own custom sections in here as well. So for number one, I think it's just a really useful exercise for a project manager to go through. Number two, it's really useful to post these status updates to share with the team so the team is up to date on the status of different projects. So this really should be, again, depending on the project, more of a weekly update that you make in Asana. And you get to see this uh, not just on the overview screen, but if you're on the business plan using portfolios, you will see um, the statuses on this portfolios screen as well. So here I can see some clients that I'm working with. I can see this project's at risk. Uh, this one's on hold. In fact, a couple of these don't even have a recent update. So what I could do here is I could even uh, request a status update. I could assign a task to this project owner and have them post an update for me. But especially if you are using the portfolios feature in that business plan, you really want those status updates to be updated at least every week. Otherwise, this portfolio, it's not really showing a real time representation of where different projects are at. So it loses its value. So that would be more of a weekly update that needs to be done in Asana is the status updates on various projects. 
Another useful update to make on a more of a weekly basis is to review any timelines that you have in your account as well. So here's a project, you know, maybe during the week I'm working perhaps more in this list view that's quite useful, um, but the timeline I find is very nice and visual. And so if I zoom out a little bit here, it can be useful again on sort of a weekly basis to review this and make any changes that you think are required. So here I am, uh, where's the time? Uh, we're back here, this is today. Um, maybe, you know, I can see this big gap here. What I might choose to do is grab a portion of this project and bring the due dates forward a little bit. Um, because the project's going well, I can bring everything forward. Uh, and so, you know, looking forward, I can kind of make changes to this. I can revise my milestones. Maybe I need to budget more time for certain tasks that can push things back as well. But I think reviewing the timeline on sort of a weekly basis is really nice. The timeline helps you to sort of zoom out a little bit. I find that working in the list view, uh, there's obviously a lot of detail here, but the timeline makes it really easy to visualize uh, what is the next few weeks or what are the next few months look like for this project. And so I think reviewing this once a week and making any adjustments is a really useful habit to get into. Now on a monthly or maybe even a quarterly basis, a couple of useful things to do is um, to archive old projects, maybe projects that are finished, you can archive from here in the sidebar. Also in the project menu, there's an archive option here. When I do that, it pushes the project down into this archived section. So it's a nice way of clearing up my sidebar and um, kind of removing old projects that are no longer active, but they're still in the account. So I can always go back and revisit and revive them if I need to. So that's just a really nice habit to get into. Maybe do like a once a month cleanup to make sure that your account stays nice and clean. Another important update to make is if you are using the goals feature, again, this is part of the business subscription, is to come in here and update your goal metrics. So one of the great things we can do with our goals, if I come down here to this one, I have a goal to increase monthly signups to 20,000 per month. And you can see here, I'm at about 10,000 at the moment. Uh, but what I can do is I can update this and I can say right now I'm at 12,000. And so again, a bit like the portfolio, the usefulness of this goal screen is proportionate to how up to date those goal metrics are. So if we're looking here and these metrics are three or six months old, that's not as useful to me. So I think uh, monthly is sort of a good time frame to aim for, for most of our goals. We can come in here, we can update the metrics. I can even come into some of these ones and update metrics on these sub goals as well. Uh, and that means that any managers uh, or people looking at those goals, they have a relatively up-to-date idea of how we're tracking towards uh, various goals in the account. And so with all of the updates that I've mentioned in this video, I think what's really important is that you set the expectation and communicate that to your team. Whether you're a small, medium or large team, um, really doesn't matter. I think it's always important to communicate to your team. This is how we use Asana and this is what uh, project managers and uh, managers expect in terms of when different parts of Asana need to be kept up to date. Like with many tools, the usefulness and the value of this tool is really dependent on the effort that's put in. So if you can follow some of these best practices to keep it up to date on a daily, weekly, monthly and quarterly basis, uh, the information's more up to date. It means that we get more value out of it and we're not having to go back and do big cleanups every now and then because lots of stuff is now old or out of date. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.